Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, I'm here with my friend and your friend, Stephanie, from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening. Once again, if you are not subscribed to Stephanie, please follow the link down in the description box below and give her a subscribe because she's doing the Lord's work, my friend. She's doing the <laughs> Lord's work for sure. How are you today, Stephanie? I'm doing okay. Been a week. <laughs> oh, sure it has, girl. I just got off with Catherine Edwards this morning. We were saying like, yeah, like yesterday. I mean, I mean, here's the thing, guys. Stephanie and I and a lot of other people that we record with, we talk to every day, pretty much on a daily basis. Anyway, even if we're not recording, and it's been crazy, hasn't it? There's a lot happening. Yeah, directed toward the divine feminine, I would say. And it's internal. It's like we're feeling a little weird in, in our own bodies. It's not necessarily that something that's exterior that's really shifted, that's noticeable besides just the normal hoopla that we've been going through now for what, like 18 months. But there's something that's happening like very spiritually. Um, and I think a lot of people are, are picking up on this, um, this shift in energy. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. I know last week we talked about doing a deep dive into the Left Behind series, but we're, we're going to be doing that just not this week. Um, I feel like, I think Stephanie and I both kind of feel like this is a little bit more pressing because so many people are kind of having the same experiences. And Stephanie, you know, I was talking to you periodically throughout the day yesterday. Like I was so out of it yesterday, like felt so weird in my own body, like not necessarily bad, weird, just different that I went to the grocery store and I couldn't remember where anything was located. Like the grocery store that I go to yeah. on a daily basis. And I had to sit there for a minute and like try to, I, I had filmed um, prior that morning, I'd filmed the Monday mystery. And usually after I film a video, I'll sit down and just go ahead and edit it and get it ready. I couldn't edit. I had to like step away after I filmed it and I'm going to finish editing it today. Um, just, just not kind of like almost on shaky ground a little bit, but it's almost like you can feel something shifting within you and, and um, so what's your experience? You, you've kind of been feeling some of that same things too, haven't you? Yeah. So I've been noticing a lot of stuff up in the sky. And anytime I look up in the sky, when I see something that looks maybe not natural, um, I start to actually, well, number one, this is going to sound so weird. Um, probably not to you or anybody like Janine or anything like that. Um, but I, I feel pure love pouring down from whatever's up there. Um, but I also feel very surreal. Like I've seen a lot of different, like, um, I've noticed a difference with like the sunsets, um, the way the moon looks, stuff like that. And astrologically, I've always had weird feelings. Um, when there's like full moon, like I, I notice a change in my mood or, um, even the way the sun hits sometimes it will actually, there's been times in my life where it's actually induced uh, almost like um, a trigger, but then sometimes it induces happiness. And lately it's just a, a very surreal feeling where I feel like something is about to just let loose and pop off and, you know, yeah. just hitting the fan kind of a feeling, but it's like, it's not, a, I'm not afraid. It's more like an anticipation. It's, uh, it's an excitement and it's like, okay, come on, God, come on, let, yeah. let's, let's get this done. And I, and I mentioned this on um, my own channel and I'll mention it here too. And I know, you know, this story, but I was outside taking the dogs out and I'm like crying emotional, please God, you know, cause it's, you know, I won't mention exactly specifically on YouTube, but going through some personal stuff on my end and uh, only a very few select people know. Um, and so you know, I'm trying to be the strength within my family and be the rock in my family, but I'm, I'm straddling a line of uh, being in the third density and being in the fifth density. Um, and so, you know, trying to get bills paid and this done, but yet uh, raise my vibrational frequency so that I'm at a five density spirituality and, and have no fear and have pure faith in God and, and, and move forward. And, um, so I'm crying and I just, I, I said, God, you got to flip the switch soon. Can you please just flip the switch? Just, just please let me know you're going to flip the switch. And uh, my motion detector light was off at the time when I said it within 10 seconds, nothing went near it. And it's an older light. So it doesn't it, you, like, you have to literally step right in that pathway for it to go on, like right on the step on, on my doorway steps. And um, so it's not very sensitive and it, and it flipped on. And at first I was like, 
and I didn't move. I was standing in the same spot way far away from it. And it flipped on. And at first I was like, oh boy, who's there? <laughs> and then I got a peaceful feeling after. And I'm like, okay, God, I get it. I get it. Okay, can you can you send me another sign? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like, I need more confirmation. I think that was a sign, but can we just do another one just to be sure? Do it again, you know. Um, more time, more time. But don't scare me. I don't want to be scared. Throw me another bone, please. Just please throw me another bone. <laughs> Well, let's talk about this for a little bit because I know, you're, I know what you're going through. And I think a lot of people are actually going through very similar things. And we won't talk about what that is specifically. But I think for me, it's been about like three weeks now, I would say. I mean, you know what's going on with me too. And yeah. um, I think one thing that I am starting to understand, I think a lot of people are kind of entering into this weird like transitional phase you know, we've been, we've been transitioning this whole time, but it's almost like, this is like the last little push. And it's so internal. It's so internal. It's so spiritual. And I think I've had to realize that what I thought was going to be coming into the new earth is not actually what's going to be happening. And, um, the alternative is probably going to be better than what I thought, but it's still that, um, expectation versus reality perception where you have to kind of like step back a little bit and be able to have faith that where, where this is going is actually where God wills it to go. And, um, and a lot of that does have to do, we, we talk a lot about the idea of the apocalypse, meaning to lift the veil. So the veil between our world and the spirit world is thinning. That's why people are seeing more UFOs. They're seeing more, um, off-worlders they're having more experiences even people who were never really interested in this stuff to in, to start with are now starting to like the ones that are ready for it are now starting to kind of see it but the interesting thing going back to the idea of what the rapture is that we've talked about is like we can see it we can experience it but other people around us can't because they're not they're not moving forward and uh -huh. even with those of us moving forward you know we know janine talks about like off-worlders and that we have family uh, off world and that some of us are going to be <clears throat> that family and it's going to shift a lot of things within our reality and these inter uh, these inner relationships we have with certain people in our lives and that's exciting it's scary there's i think i feel like there's apprehension as well because it's it's going into the unknown you know, we're all going into the unknown. Who the hell knows what a 4D planet looks like? We, we've, we're on a 3D planet. So, um, but especially with the divine feminine. And I feel like the divine feminine is coming back like with vengeance right now. We hear the talk about the, the dragon energy, the Kali energy, the Virgin Mary. She's more of the Kali dragon energy that's coming forth. We think of, we talked about this on Monday on the round table I did on Catherine's table or on Catherine's channel about uh, how women have been kind of stripped. If you look at the woman as being the uh, symbol of divine feminine, a lot of throughout the centuries, women have been like stripped of all of their autonomy. You know, we were supposed to be the demure damsel in distress. And, and don't get me wrong, I like good romance. Like I, I like a good romance and I like to be the damsel in distress sometimes and have that man come rescue me. That's that's a good little romance, but that's just few and far between instances. But, um, but um, we're finding that women are, are uh, you know, I've been called a witch. We've all been called these names by these men who are not happy about this. And I think this is just showing the shit that's happening with the divine feminine. And so you actually pulled some cards because a lot of tarot, it's funny. So Stephanie, and I watch a lot of tarot card readers, not just Janine's are our, our like queen up here, but we also watch some, they're all getting the same thing. It's so fascinating. They're all getting the same thing. So do you want to um, elaborate on that a little bit more, Stephanie? So I have two tarot card decks and I have two angel card decks. Um, and I, I pull from all four with every reading I do. Um, and I've been practicing hours and hours and hours a day. I really wish Janine lived closer to me. We'd have a load of fun. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's like, at first it was a little scary to get into it, you know, especially when um, I first started watching this kind of stuff um, coming from my Christian background. It was like, um, <clears throat> I was a little out of my comfort zone because I still had that. Oh, is this a sin? Is this a sin? You know, am I going to be condemned for this? And it's so, you know, I, I said to you, 
excuse me, I said to you, you brought this up. I forgot who you brought this up with. Uh, oh, we we're talking about this and um, group yesterday. And I'm not gonna just be, I'm, I'm not going to go into anything personal anybody else said, but you had, you had said to me that um, you had said to the ladies something about how, um, what did you say to them? Oh my gosh. No, that you said that you saw more joy in Janine's face. Yes. Than you did. So you go, you walk into a church and you don't see joy. And then you, you watch someone like Janine or even another tarot card reader and Christ is talking through the cards and you see pure joy. And if you look at somebody like Janine too, um, you know, she looks about 10 years younger than she did when she first started doing this. Her color is like vibrant. She glows like she's, you know, you know, she just, she glows and she's full of light. And, um, it, that says a lot in, in, you know, if we're going to take something out of the Bible where I don't think this is, uh, tainted at all, we know the Bible has been tainted, but it says you can judge, um, you know, someone's faith by the fruit of their tree, you know? And so the fruit on her tree is abundant and it's vibrant and it's very high frequency. And then you take someone like, and, you know, I'm not trying to bash anybody, but somebody that's really fundamentalist and they're just miserable and they thrive on putting others down. And that that's a life that I needed to get away from. I was not a fundamentalist, but I was around them and I, you know, that's what I was put into in my life. That was where God planted me in my life with the church. And now that I can sit there logically and spiritually at the same time and try to mesh together what pieces of my life um, God put in front of me and put in my life, like I can start to now piece the puzzle pieces together to figure out how it intertwines with my life purpose. Now I was planted in a church. Now I'm helping others with the groups. Well, God is helping others through me in the groups. I don't want to take credit for it because it's divinely orchestrated. Um, so I give him the credit. He, she, cause you know, God isn't, he's both. <laughs> um, but now that we know better, um, but I'm starting to see though, that I was planted there because this is it's something that's going to serve my life purpose. And going back to a dream I had at 15 years old, where I was leading a, a very large group. I was a leader of a large group going up a mountain and, and, and I took it very literal. And I knew I was, I was 35 in this dream, but when I had the dream, I was 15. And so um, I won't get into too much of that, but um, you know, I, I always wondered what it meant. And I thought I took it literally at first and now I see the symbology in it. And I'm like, yeah, I, not that I'm better than anybody cause I'm leading something, but God is using whatever gifts I have to help others. We all have a gift and we all have to figure out what that gift is so we can use it for the better of humanity. So I see the different changes in my life that are being orchestrated divinely in order to help humanity. And it's like, it's nothing that I'm purposely doing. It's just kind of falling in my lap. You know, I get the spiritual download from the spirit realm, whether it's, it's God source universe or angels or whatever. I think I channel God more than anything, but, <clears throat> but then I take that download. I, I meditate upon, upon it and then I put it to action. I don't just sit on it. I put it to action. That's the biggest part. I think a lot of people have a hard time taking what they're given spiritually, the information and actually putting action to it. Yeah. Well, we've been terrorized by the church that if there's anything that you are receiving, you, you can't possibly have the gift of prophetic prophecy or divination because that's wrong. <coughs> when actually like every person in the Bible had the gift of divination and prophetic prophecy. So mm -hmm. it's not wrong. It's, it's just, um, we know, we know, I mean, this is like fact, the church is part of the group, the bunch, they are part of the system that of the matrix. 100 mm -hmm. they're not a, they're not what you think they are some of the people who run these churches don't even know that they're a part of this satanic system so of course they're going to try to strip you of everything that god gave you because that's what satan does satan strips you of your sovereignty and of your autonomy um, that was given to you by god 
You know, that's again, I'm a, I say this all the time and I'm going to say it again. Your relationship with divinity, your relationship with God is nobody else's business, but yours and God's. Nobody has a right to come in there and tell you what your relationship, what your standing is with God. That is between you and God, period, end of story, especially another human being. You're on the same playing field as they are. Yep. And you need to trust your inner self. You need to trust God within you. He's not a being up in the sky invisible. He's in all of us. anybody who carries a soul of light. Mm -hmm. He lives within us. And he's going to give you that inner knowing that we always talk about now, that gnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's a matter of trusting it. It's in, in any kind of gift, too, just, it just doesn't come to you. You have to, you, I was talking to you off camera about this. You have to work it like a muscle. Yep. You have to practice it. Um, and honestly, I look at like the, the cards now. That's, I, I do pray out loud to God or I pray in my head to God still, um, minus certain words that I know are bad now. But, my card reading is part of my prayer time too. And it's not like I'm trusting in, in the paper and the pictures. I'm not, no, it, it's, it's more or less like I'm a very, I'm a very visual person. So for me to see the pictures and kind of depict on what God is trying to tell me through the pictures is a huge, huge, huge help because it's like, sometimes you're like, well, am I listening to myself, my inner voice, or am I listening to the voice of God working through me? And sometimes it's kind of hard. So kind of, you know, having that, um, a tool. It, yeah. It's a, it's a tool to confirm things. Although sometimes I sit there and Bryce, you know, this about me. I'll be like, okay, confirm it about 10 more times. And then maybe we're talking. Can you confirm this about one more time? Can you confirm it again? <laughs> you clarify, please. Yeah. We, we read together a lot. Cause I have a couple of decks as well. And Stephanie's way better than I am, but, um, no, oh yes, you are. But we read together and we're always like, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me put my book Clarify. out. Here. <laughs> We're not Janine by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I've been but doing it for thirty five years, so that's yeah. as long as I've been alive, <laughs> right? But that's my yoga practice. I mean, that's the yoga practice. Is every day it's yeah. practice, and we don't call it your performance. It's your practice. It's your work, and you you hone in on these ability. And part of the yoga practice does give you more you more grounded in in the uh, metaphysical and your your intuition, your intuitive arts through the practice as well. And that's my practice in the morning. I've said many times, that's my morning prayer. It's my morning meditation. It's my morning baptism. You know, so I get that prayer doesn't have to be what the church says it is. Who gave that authority to some man to tell you how you have to pray? You pray the way yeah. God created you to pray. And it's going to look different for everyone. And in prayer, what is prayer? Prayer is just communication. It's just talking and listening, talking, listening. It's, it's a conversation Yeah. to the divine. Yeah. And, and, and God God loves us so much. He doesn't want to sit there and just like let you have this guessing game. He's going to communicate with you. It's just a matter of whether you're trusting the voice, that, that inner knowing. A lot of it is trust. A lot of it is, is not second guessing what the divine is telling you. Yeah. And we're programmed to second guess. The church makes you second guess. You go to the pastor, hey, pastor so-and-so, I had this dream and I think um, it's prophetic and I can't tell you how many times I've done this in church and I need to talk to you about it. Well, are you sure it's from God? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that's where, that's what, that's one of the biggest things that had me leave the church, you know, and I'll say this, I've had dreams since I was a little girl. And most of and, and when I wake up and I have a prophetic dream, I know it's prophetic by the way I feel and it's something I cannot shake. So it, it affects me in every way, shape and form for a couple of days. And I can't shake off the feeling. I wake up sometimes like jolt. I jolt out of sleep and it kind of like just shakes me awake. And if it my gut just knows God is trying to communicate with me through the dream. Yeah. Same thing with a vision too. A vision is like when you go kind of in a trance for a second and you see something. Yeah. It's, it's a same deal. It, it, it greatly affects you. Um, and um, when, and I, I've had so many different things that have happened um, that I previously had seen in a dream ever since I was a little girl. So when I have a pastor que making me question that, it had me very, very confused, very confused. Um, and it was almost like a slap in the face, like, you know, don't trust your intuition and don't get me started on that. <laughs> so yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, something yeah. I've had to work on is that that trusting the inner voice of, of the divine. Yeah. Well, you've gotten so good at it too. Like, I think, I think there comes a point where, and I was talking <laughs> about Catherine this morning, where all of a sudden you're just, you're done. And you like, you're like, okay, I see now. Like I was saying on Catherine's show that I was that kid that had to touch the hot stove to know it's hot. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of us are that way where we have to go through the hard lessons to actually understand, to like actually get it to be the point where we're like, all right, I understand now. And I can tell you that I will never be a member of a church again. Like that's never going to happen again. I'm never going to put myself in that position again to be manipulated. Yeah. To be um, by a human being, not by not God's never manipulated us. It's always been the humans that have, and you know, who one of the biggest characters in the Bible had prophetic dreams. That was Joseph. And it's technical. Or uh, Daniel, Daniel too. So how is it that we're taught to venerate these people in the Bible? But yet if we have the same ability, all of a sudden, we don't know if it's actually from God. Yeah. Like that, it, no, no, just no, no, no. And it's not man's job to put, cast that into us, to make those decisions for God. It's, you know, as, as Tamara says, like, I don't know who stepped down and made you God, but you have no business in telling somebody what God's message is to them. That's between God and that person. And how dare you, how dare you, these pastors think that they have that authority over God to dictate to you what your gifts are, because they're actually saying that they have authority over God to tell you that. And that's, that's yeah. bullshit. I mean, the fact that I went to a pastor one day, this is, this is back last August, 2020. And I had a dream about these and the arm. And I went to my pastor and said, do not get it. And you need to tell the congregation, do not get it. It's bad. God told me in a dream. Well, Stephanie, I, I, you know, I, I think that maybe the, that was, a, 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 she couldn't even really answer. Um, pretty much told me that she'll be the first one in line if she can to uh, get one of those. And I'm like, yeah, you like discernment lady. So peace out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, it's like I was telling Catherine this morning where we we're, were talking about uh, teachers and when you realize somebody that you respect as a, a senior to you, like a mentor or a teacher, when you realize that you understand something they don't, first of all, all of a sudden they lose power over you. They don't have yeah. any power over you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you realize you can't be my teacher anymore. You don't, you can't, what, what, le what do you have left to teach me? If the pastors are petrified of that. Pastors, they are petrified of prophets. Mm -hmm. They are petrified. Because the prophet will put them in their place and say, no, this is the message from God. And I'm like that. If I have a message from God, I will tell you what it is. And I'm not going to candy coat it either. Because it's what John the Baptist did. It's what yep. Joshua did. You know, it's I'm an empath awesome. and I, I care about other people's feelings. But when God tells me to run this way, I go that way. And I've learned that if I don't, it's like. It's like the story with, um, oh, whatchamacallit with the whale. Uh, Jonah. Jonah. He ran away from God telling him to do something, to send a message to Nineveh to, to stop the, the shenanigans they were doing, which we know what that is now, kind of like a Sodom and Gomorrah thing, in my opinion. Um, and he ran away and he didn't get, you know, there was no blessing or anything like that. And, and he got swallowed up by a whale, which I don't know how. Now that we know the Bible has been a little tampered with that, that'd be a fun story to investigate. Yeah. Um, one day. Um, so, but anyways, just to use the story to make a point though, is when we choose to follow what God's directions are, whether it goes against the grain of a church or a grain against the grain of anything else, God will always stand there with you through the journey and he will pour down blessings upon you. And a lot of times when you tell, when he tells you to do something, it's going to be a little bit hard. It's going to be a little, there's going to be a little tricky stuff in between there because a lot of times that's more complicated way. But at the end of it, just like we've been going through this battle, this, this spiritual battle where um, we've had to go through all these trials and tribulations as truthers and um, digital warriors or light workers or whatever you call yourself. And there's been persecution there's been you're, you're told you're crazy you're told that uh you're a conspiracy theorist you know um 
all these different things. And it makes you test your faith. It's a test of faith. And so when you go through those tests with, um, with, with strength and with um, <clears throat> humility and dignity and honor and everything like that, at the end where, you know, we're almost at the end of the tunnel there where you see the light, you, you, you start seeing the light. And now you're like, you know, you start building up momentum and strength as you're getting toward the light and everything. And, and at the end of that tunnel, there'll be blessings pour down. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about that kind of blessings. But I think in this new world, God is going to bless us with the families we've always wanted. If we don't have that, or if we're in some a situation where it's, it's just sucking our energy, it's not pouring energy into us. Um, which we'll talk about after too, mm -hmm. um, as part of my message here. And then, um, you know, he'll make sure that all of your needs are cared for. I mean, he knows what we need. What is it? It's, I think it's in the, the book of, um, I'm pretty sure it's Matthew where it says, um, have an eye, the, the, the flowers, the grass, the trees, you know, God knows what they need and, and gives them what they need. Are you any less than that? Yeah. So it's, it's right now we're in a serious test of faith. That that's what this is right now. And yeah. a lot of us, our relationships are crumbling. A lot of our, um, our belief system has crumbled and, and, and more people are about to have their belief system crumble. This is where Jesus talks about, the temple crumbling. No pillar will stand. All the pillars are being knocked down with the hammer of God. Um, and so um, this is a this is a serious test of faith. And um, where it says in the book of Revelation, blessed are those who make it to the end for the reward shall be theirs. So there's hope. Yeah. But we got to trust that inner knowing, that inner, you know, it's I have inner peace. I have an inner, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. It's something you just have to feel to, to know. It's like that old saying, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes sense in a way. I mean, he already knows our plans, but we have to speak it into action because our words carry frequencies that manifest what we want and desire. And our thoughts do too, but I think when we put it either, I think what happens is, so this is just an opinion of mine. I don't know if this is necessarily true. I think our thoughts have a certain frequency mm -hmm. to manifest. Our, our verbal words have a little bit higher frequency to manifest, but when you write it down, I think that's like maybe, maybe the ultimate. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, yep. yeah. So we want to get into the car reading for the divine yeah. feminine that you pulled. Yeah, I'm gonna. So I'm just. Gonna, I'm just gonna put this disclaimer out there that I'm not professional. I'm not Janine. <laughs> um, I'm very, very. I'm a baby at this. So this is just what I channeled. Um, I had to look up some meanings of certain cards still because I'm still getting the hang of it. I'm gonna be reading off of the the um, the Light Seers deck and the Magic Seers deck. Um, so there's two decks right here. Well, then it's not the full deck. It's just the cards that I pulled. I had to do this. I can't do this right on live camera here. So I had to pre-plan this. So what I did was I chose three cards. And then I can, I, um, and, and when I channel, um, when I use my cards, what I do is I cancel out any negative energies, any uh, malevolent energies, no demonic energies. And I invite anything from universe, source, God, and angels and i only allow the light to come in and I, I i verbally say that when i read the cards i just want to put that out there so we'll start off so i got the, the page of wands with the two of swords oh my god i'm gonna feel like janine here <laughs> so this is a reading for the divine feminine right this is for the divine feminine specifically God led me to do this message because I'm going through some stuff, but God has also told me that I'm not the only divine feminine going through this. This is, this is happening on a mass scale. And I needed to put this in a video, whether it was with you or by myself, because this is going to help a lot of us out that maybe are struggling with some confusion. There's multiple meanings of this too. So you take what resonates with you. So got the page of wands and the two of swords. 
So I wrote down what I felt and I got, you are going through a major shift of self-discovery, finding out who you are, purging old energies, pains, traumas, relationships to put you at the next level of yourself for your sole purpose. Because of this, you may find yourself faced with some life changing decisions you need to make. And then I pulled the nine of pentacles. I don't know if my light is reflecting there a lot with the king of cups. Can you see that? Okay. Look at that king of cups. He, lo he looks like a modern man, doesn't he? Well, this is a modern deck. This is definitely yeah. a modern deck. This is my very first deck. The, the cards are already getting flimsy and, and they're, they're getting vintagey looking. <laughs> so, um, my message through these two cards were do not worry about earthly matters or money. Abundance is coming. God knows what you need and will provide. Keep holding the light and the universe will reward you. And then this is where I, I felt God telling me about the, I don't have the exact part of Revelation, but I already mentioned it. The blessed are those who make it till the end for they, their reward will be theirs. Um, and I really felt strongly about that particular verse. And I feel that that verse is accurate in the Bible. One of the, the fewer verses. <laughs> and then I got the two. Uh, oh, boy. Did I miss a card? I think I missed a card. I did. But it's two of pentacles. And I had a bunch of cards fly out at me when I shuffled. So I used them all. So I had the emperor, the magician, six of pentacles. So these cards not in this order beautiful <laughs> and uh, yeah this is a beautiful deck it just channeling these are a little bit harder than like the original like the you know the other deck that i have so i got the divine is in the works of balancing your life there's divine intervention the oldest crumbling to allow new beginnings this may be a relationship, a job, home, friendship, etc. New beginnings, you new beginnings will be you'll be led to. These beginnings are positive and are a gift from the divine creator. Do not resist change because where the rest of my message go? Well, I memorize it anyways. Don't resist change because there's blessings that come with change. God, God has this, this lovely habit of closing doors, but he also opens them. Let's pause on that for a second. Um, I talk about this in yoga a lot because when, when people come into the practice, sometimes <laughs> when the work gets really hard and they're forced to face certain things, they'll run from the practice. And that will sometimes mean that they will stay in bad patterns or bad relationships or whatever they're doing to themselves because they don't know what, what the alternative is. So they'd rather stay in the toxic situation instead of just trusting the process to open up into a place that's better for them because they know the toxicity, but they don't know the health, the vitality, you know? So, so this is really important. This idea of just trusting and allowing you to kind of go through, you know, uh, what's in the Bible. I walk through the Valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And in part of this change, it can feel sometimes like it's very traumatic and like yeah, it's the dark night of the soul, right? But if you just trust the process and keep going forward, the other side yeah. is much better. And change is to going it. to shake everything in you. Yep. A life change is going to shake you and it's going to make you feel very uncomfortable. It's going to make you get that icky feeling in the pit of your stomach where you just want to throw up. But the thing is, that's God working on you, something in you. It's and friction in yeah and, change, and you need that friction he's you're like clay and he's molding you and, and and making you into what you need to be the worst thing you can do is resist it and um i've always well i've always liked change i don't like like breakups and stuff like that that that's a very uncomfortable change i don't like that kind of stuff but I get bored really, really easily of certain things. And so um, 
I like change to a degree, but when it comes to like my heart being broken or anything like that, I know. And that's, that's where I've always like butted heads with God, like resisting, resisting, resisting. And, um, I always would think, well, it's my fault. What did I do wrong? You know, whether it's a friendship or a boyfriend or, you know, whatever it is. And so it doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with you. It's something that you need to evolve from. It, God is just working on you to bring in the next best thing, like uh, something better. And if you were in a position where you were right where you needed to be, God wouldn't close the door. <clears throat> that makes sense. So you can let me know if you want me to go on to the next. Yeah, let's keep going. Set. All right. So this is Magic Seer's deck. This is like similar to the deck that um, Janine uses. <coughs> she probably does have this deck. Um, so this would be like the older uh, pictures on it. So we had the Nine of Swords with the Eight of Wands. My gosh, my light. I need to adjust it better here. Yeah, pull it back. Better? Yeah. Actually, that's perfect where you had it there. Yep. Okay. Many of you will have your faith tested at this time. Do not resist or run from it from these tests. But hold on. It's to align you with new opportunities. Swift changes are coming. Stay strong. And then we got the four of swords with the queen of cups. I think that's in the right order. This is first. This is second. <laughs> um, this is a time to rest. Hard work is ahead. Start meditating and emotionally balancing yourself. So take good, good care of yourself, whether it's your eating habits, exercising a little bit more, or getting into an exercise routine and all that kind of stuff. You need to take care of your vessel. Um, when the time comes, you will be ready to take on challenges because you are well rested and good headspace. That's so important, especially about what we're about to go into. So, in order for us to help others, when we go into this this uh, swift changes, we need to be balanced and we need to know how to. <clears throat> as an empath, we're going to have like a lot of people who watch us are empaths, right? Or light workers, whatever you want to call. And part of the issues with being an empath is we we lack boundaries in blocking energies. So we often absorb the energies and it's coming from all directions. Like I can walk in a room with 20 people. I'll feel all 20 people's energies. And then before you know it, I'm, I'm just drained. I feel exhausted. I just want to run out of there and cry because I don't know what I'm feeling. I'm, I have confusion. So something I've been working on myself is, is blocking those energies and, and, and learning to say no. That's a huge thing. If I'm not comfortable with it, like you don't have to say yes to every little last favor people ask you to do. You know what I mean? Um, but we need to be, um, we need to be level headed and spiritually aligned in everything in order to help others. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like a, a, a counselor. If they're not, if, if they're not balancing themselves out, how can they help others? You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> okay. Then we have King of Swords. Can you see that? Okay. Mm-hmm. With the Page of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, and the Two of Wands. I think that's the Two of Wands. I still have to look sometimes. Um, so this indicates you are a natural born leader. You were born for this time. It kind of goes into the Book of Esther where she says, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. That came to mind. Um, you have a new life ahead of abundance, new jobs, new opportunities, reliable partners, new, new relationships, friendships, soul families and soul mates coming together, twin flames coming together in harmony. Um, so this is where some people uh, might feel old relationships crumbling. Those pillars are being removed um, because let's talk it, about this. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people are experiencing this situation right now. So can you <laughs> tell our audience who don't know what a twin flame is exactly? There's so many different ideas of a twin flame. Um, some people say it's your higher self connecting with your, it's like your conscious and subconscious coming together. And there's so many different things. Some people think it's like a partner. Um, my opinion 
is I think some of us have a twin flame partner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's all or just some of us where it's like that person is the opposite gender of you. And they are like so much alike. Like you just, they're, they're they're basically your other half. And this is what I understand from twin flames as well is that twin flames are only (laughs) ever on the earth plane together at the same time during times of transition. Usually two of you switch off being on the earth plane and the other one is guiding you from the other side of the veil and then you'll switch. But in times of great transition, you will both be on the earth plane. That's what I've heard. It's just a theory. And of course, what greater transition are we in right now? Great awakening, great revelation. And a lot of twin flames, and this is what we've been finding, Stephanie and I have been finding with a lot of people we've spoken to off camera, is that they're they're as they start to shift and grow and move and change, they're realizing even though they love their partner, their partner might not be that that twin flame. And that twin flame might be coming into their lives now at this great conjunction, um, which is a very fascinating topic to look at and to, to talk about because we're all going to be kind of scattered, I think, like, at, you know, we don't know the full extent of what 4D is going to look like. Um, some of us won't be staying on the earth plane. Even those of us that are awakening might go off to another place, you know, another another. You know, and with twin flames, usually from what I understand, when they are on the earth at the same time, they won't find each other until maybe later in their life because they have to go through independence from each other in order to be able to recognize the power the two of them bring, if that makes sense, when they find each other. I I read earlier because I was I was I was um, looking into this. So the twin flames, when it's about time that they all that they they don't usually know each other at first. They go their whole life's not know they're they're two totally different spots of the world. Um, but when it's almost that time where they're about to meet, there's telepathic communication that they might not even be aware of. Um and uh so yeah, it's it's very I, I just read that. So that that was interesting. Um and it's different was, from a soulmate. So soulmates are different. So you could yeah. be married to a soulmate. Soulmates are just people that are in your soul family. It's like your classmates from school that you, you know, we all know our, the kids we grew up with, right? Like I still remember all their first and last names. Even my friends who are married now, my girlfriends who are married, I still call them by their maiden name because that's who they are in my head. They went through that with you. That's what soulmates are. They go through the different grades with you. And you do feel a connection to those people. Like Stephanie and I, I know we've spent many lives together. I know we're in that soulmate group. And I, you do instantly feel that connection with people that, that are your mates in, in your group. But the twin, you can, and you can lifetimes where your twin flame is not on this planet, you will end up probably marrying one of your soulmates. Um, but when this twin flame is on this planet and the two of you meet, it's a very different circumstances, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a difference in it. Um, Let's see. I mean, both are powerful. Both, both uh, relationships are very, very powerful. Um, but the twin flame there, it's, it's almost like um, where you have identical twins and they t- telepathically communicate and they just know each other. Like they're a mirror of each other, obviously, because they're identical twins. This is not, this is not a, a, an identical twin in like a physical form. This is a, an identical twin of almost like your soul. Mm-hmm. One is one gender and one is the other. Yeah. Um, and then you can have, I think, I think there's twin sisters too, like a soul twin sisters and, and such um, stuff like that. It's very unique. It's, it's, it's definitely a fascinating topic that I definitely want to deep dive more into. Um, and uh, yeah. And then, and then when we go to soul family, this is just a personal opinion of mine. Um, I wanted to bring this up really quick. You know, the Bible talks about the 12 tribes of Israel coming together, which I think is really Armenia, but that's just my opinion yeah. um, because of the Jesus strand information that we now have. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot back. Yeah. There. Yeah. So you know, I, I related to this. Okay. So before I met you and before I met any other truther that I've met yet, there was a, a, a serious connection already, almost like a telepathic communication. Um, like I knew you, but I didn't know you mm-hmm. or, you know, that, and I, I could speak on, you know, with a couple other truthers out there too, about that. Um, even Janine, although I haven't met her yet Saturday, 
looking forward to that. Um, but it's it's like, wow, I know these people, but I don't know them. Like it, it just it's so weird. It's a recognition. So, yes. It's like I don't recognize your avatar that you're in, the meat suit you're in, but I recognize your soul. I recognize that essence that you have because our souls are much larger than our, our avatars that we're in. So um, I, I relate this to the 12 tribes of Israel. <coughs> Sorry, tickle coming together from the four corners of the earth. And they said the second coming of Jesus would be on a cloud. Well, what's the internet? And I do think that the second coming of Christ will be in, a, in an actual human form too. But I, I think there's several meanings to it. I think it's yeah. that meaning, yes. But I also think there's a meaning where it's, the, the 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 Christ consciousness, the 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 soul families coming together on the cloud. Just just uh, food for thought. In my opinion, you know, I was thinking about the other day about how like we've all got to know each other so well, and we do all these zooms together. But half the time, half of us don't even have pants on when we're talking to each other. <laughs> I can't say I'm one of those. I'm always wearing pants. I have a child in the house. So I mean, I got pants on, but it's like, you know, some people just don't even like, cause you can't see below. And it's like, we are having these in depth conversations and half the people are sitting in their underwear, you know? So, or, you know, you know, I make sure the camera might, there might be days where I'm like extremely bloated and like, you know, the, the, the girls, the twins here are kind of like, you know, not, they're not feeling, you know, in, in a mood for a bra. So be, I'll make sure yeah. my camera is, <laughs> is like up here and above, you know, I, I, I said to, oh, I, I forgot who I said this to. I said in this new world, no, I said it to God. I said it in prayer. <laughs> this is the weirdness of my prayers. I'm like God in this new world, can we get rid of the bra, please? I want those ladies to hang out in the open. Okay. Oh, I, just, I can't, I want I'm done. I want a reduction. I don't want, I <laughs> want them like go on. Listen to the men out there. Bras is like wearing what, what's what's those things when you play sports, the jock straps or whatever. Jock oh my gosh, I can't imagine being a man wearing one of those. Okay, wearing a bra is the most uncomfortable, unnatural thing ever. No, you got to go and get these these ones. Oh no, I have those. I, no, there's no wire in them. Like they're not sexy at all. But I nope, they're not in my life where I don't <clears throat> give a crap. Like this, yeah. wait, was this comfortable? It's like it's. You know, sports bras, I wear sports bras a lot when I teach and I practice, of course, but they're so tight that, and I sweat so much in my practice that if I wear them for too long, it'll rub rashes. But these, yeah. like these suckers, they're like a step down and man, they're so comfortable. They're called t-shirt bras. Are they? Well, and you can get them at Target. Yeah. That's where I get them. I have a whole job. Yeah. I refuse. I, even when I have to like dress up fancy, I still got one of these suckers on. Like it just if I have to wear an underwire bra, it's like wearing, we were talking off camera. Like I refuse to wear blue jeans. Like I'll only wear blue jeans if I have to, because blue jeans Leggings. are so effing uncomfortable. Like the, the button presses into your stomach. Like you can't move. And so I only wear blue jeans when I have to. And the same thing with an underwire bra. If I have to wear it, I'll wear it with, there's really nowhere that I have to wear that underwire bra, you know, because it's just, it's so uncomfortable. And I yep. sleep in granny panties full on like granny. Panties. You know what? Wear that with a badge of honor. You I know what? It's a, I, I'd rather be comfortable than be like trapped in my clothing. There's yeah. A, and, and we're told, oh, you got to wear clingy clothing, skinny jeans, this and that. Listen, listen, when you got a belly from a child who destroys your innards, there's no wearing skinny jeans. Can I just well, say? I've never had a child and I don't like skinny jeans. Like I, if I'm not comfortable, if I'm uncomfortable yeah. in my clothes and I'm going to be in a bad mood and I'm not going to be in yeah. myself and life is supposed to be enjoyable. So I wear granny, I sleep in granny panties and a t-shirt. It's not, it's not sexy, but I don't care. <laughs> and, um, and I wear these like pseudo cloth. Things. I like, I like, um, like those maxi dresses, the sun dresses and stuff like that. I will wear the thing is, I'm in Connecticut, so it gets cold in the wintertime, but I go like a little hippie and I put my leggings on with my sundress and then a, a cardigan sweater and I look like I'm coming out of like a head shop. I don't care. I don't care. You know what? I'm comfortable. You don't have to like my style, but I'm comfortable. I wear t-shirt dresses, dresses a lot in the summer yeah. and that's si simply because it's so freaking <clears throat> hot down here that you get, your legs get sweaty. And so it feels kind of nice to have like a little breeze in between your legs when it's that hot. 
<laughs> yeah. It's so hot and humid, so. Well, people don't realize, too, like, if you're in the south, so up in, up in the northeast, it gets really nasty in the summertime, really nasty. And this particular summer was especially warm, and it was very, very humid. I mean, you couldn't. You could have your air conditioner on and still be sweating. It was that hot this summer. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, like trying, I'm a gardener. So going out and gardening, I'd have, I, it's like, you know, it's like I, I took a shower outside, but I didn't because I was pouring with sweat. I mean, not to get gross or anything, but um, it was, it was really nasty this particular summer. So yeah, it, it was the dresses all the way. Or I wear yeah. like the, the sweatpants shorts, you know, they're kind of the sweatpants material, but they're shorts and yeah, I like those too. Hot. It's just too, <laughs> it's just too damn hot sometimes. That's why they say people in the South talk slower, have a slower draws because it's just too damn hot to talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so new, new world God, we want to, I want to, I want these to be, and then. <laughs> Get a little lift, no bra, you know. Um, I'd like more hair. I lost a lot of my hair due to a medication uh, right before my wedding. Um, yeah, I so I had I had bald spots everywhere. They're growing back in. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was bad. I had clumps of hair. I called my mom crying. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be a bald bride. It's okay, honey. We'll get you a wig. I don't want an effing wig. I want my <laughs> hair. I want my hair. <laughs> So, I mean, obviously it doesn't look like I lost any hair, but I would have to show you a picture of when I was a little kid. I had thick, thick hair. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I have a third of the hair I used to have. So when those med beds come out, there be, better be a button on it that says hair growth. Head, head hair growth, not other places. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be very specific. If you're a woman, be very specific. Would you like more hair on the head? You know, no no chest hair, no back hair, no downstairs. Yeah, no, I listen, I shave every single day. Like, I'm one of those girls that shaves every day. And, and that's typically for hygiene purposes because I wear tight pants when I practice and it gets really sweaty. So I want to try to keep it. I don't know. So I don't, I, I want, if, if that's coming more here is, is fine, but everywhere else, no. I love how we just went on this random subject of <laughs> divine feminine. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Divine feminine. Let's, let's, let's release the bras. <laughs> Burn the bras. Burn the bras with the mask. But I want to keep the razors because I, I, I am not one of those women that's like never, like there are women yeah. that are really opposed to shaving and I'm not one of them. No, no, I, I can't, I can't do, I cannot do that. If I, even if like with my legs, like I, every, I shave every single day. And even again, most of that is for hygiene, but also when I lay in bed at night and there's like pricklies, I can't get comfortable. And I just, yeah, that's yeah. for me. That's so if anybody comments, Oh, that's the patriot. No, that's for me. That's literally for me. That's my personal uh, preference too. Yeah. I want to, I want to, and I used to do it like when I would, when I taught Mysore every morning, uh, there's a lot of adjustments where I'll have my students grab my legs. Um, and I always felt like it was a lot nicer for them to, <laughs> to have to grab my legs if they were soon. Oh, is that a Chia pet? No. What did you name him? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they're even thinking about him. I was like, you know, I'm just, gonna, just courtesy, customer courtesy here. <laughs> They're smooth. Oh, I love where this conversation went. It's so random. I love it. And once you're like, what the fuck? You know what though? I guarantee you there's gonna be women out there that really truly appreciate us talking about all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was so funny. My mom pulled my sister, and I hope this isn't embarrassed my mom, but she pulled my sister and me aside once and she was like, Girls, if I'm ever in the hospital and I don't have my conscious if I'm not conscious, like unconscious in the hospital, and I thought she was gonna say, like, just know I love you. She goes, just make sure my roots are done. <laughs> make sure my roots are done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> make sure. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Make sure my roots are done. I'm like tweezed. <laughs> you know, you know, what can also go too is, is I, I, I hate plucking. I, I hate it. It's painful or, or waxing. You know what? In the new world, let's just, let's just have the most feminine eyebrows ever and not have to do anything with them. <laughs> We're just fantasizing here, guys. Like, <laughs> I don't have mine are not naturally very thick anyway because I'm a lot fairer. But um, listen, I'm Italian. <laughs> I'm, I'm a ta well, I'm half Italian. Okay, listen, listen, Italian girls, 
if we do not maintain it look like a gorilla <laughs> I'm basically like majority of me is Northern European and English. I have a little bit of Coptic, Egypt, Egyptian, a little bit Romanian in me, but no, I'm very, uh, no one in my family. I come from a family of blonde people. So you don't really, none of the guys have anything here. It's nothing, nothing. We got nothing. Well, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I don't mean to bring this up. So I used to do EKGs on people. Electro, uh, on your head, right? no, no, no. It's on the chest, chest and the chest. legs and the arms. So you're, 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 uh, you're, you're lighting someone up like a Christmas tree. In other words, you're, you're getting their heartbeat on a monitor. And I used to do these all the time. I did about sometimes five to 10 a day. I'm working in primary care and I always wait. I was once in a while, get a really, really hairy, beastly guy. And I would say, are you French Canadian? And they go, yes, every single time. I knew the French Canadians because they got the hair. Well, you know, men who men who are of Scottish descent, have you ever noticed men of Scottish descent can typically grow their beards to like right above? Yes. Their, maybe yes. like shave it. Yeah, because it's, I mean, Scotland's cold. It's, it's very fascinating. It's almost like these places where it's, um, where they have to adapt to colder weather. They, they're they're going to look more of, you know, an animal nature, you know, the, <laughs> I'm not making fun of anybody, by the way. If you're yeah, a man no. In, yeah, no, I mean, we're just having fun here. Whatever God made you to look like, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I just, I felt I would, I would feel so, so bad. So when I did EKGs on these men, I would say, have you ever seen the movie The Virgin? Forty-year-old virgin. <laughs> yeah, forty-year-old. Yeah, forty-year-old virgin. And nine times out of ten, yes. All right. Well. I apologize, but you're about to become a man lantern when I take these tabs off your chest. And literally, they're like, oh, <laughs> they went, I'm like, I'm really, really sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm really sorry, but you're going to have a little wax stop. <laughs> My grandmother used to say, Pred bears no pain. Like beauty is <laughs> pain, Pred bears no pain. Men, that is exactly what women go through. <laughs> It's, it's but it was so funny because I, I, even though they're in pain, I'd have them laughing like, oh, you got a man, Andrew. <laughs> I would have so much fun with, oh, my gosh, I loved my patients. They, I, well, they're not my, they're the doctor's patients, but I call them mine anyways because, you know, if you're an empath, they, they tell you their whole life story within five minutes of being in an exam room. <laughs> they, that's what happens. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, you when you work in primary care, you have your repetitive uh, <clears throat> you know, patience and everything, which we know why now, but, um, it's, it's, it's the industry, but, um, you, you start to develop a relationship with all of these people, like to the point where you're like, Oh, so how's your granddaughter? So-and-so did she have a great concert? You know, she's like a fourth, fourth grade recorder concert, whatever, you know, cause you remember their stories. So, and I'm really good at that. Like, if you tell me something about you, I will remember it. I had one guy who was super, super claustrophobic and he loved me because I always remember to keep the door cracked because he was claustrophobic in the room. And, and let me tell you, he was not a nice man, but I got on his good side because I remembered that thing about him. Um, and Oh, this, I could write a whole book on working in the medical field. Oh my God. The things that would come out of people. My bowels are this and this and this. Wait for the doc. Wait for the doctor. <laughs> Wait for the doctor. I don't need to know. That is above my pay grade. <laughs> I don't get paid the big bucks for that. You, Honey, it's okay. Just to say bowel issues. We're good. We're good. <laughs> or, oh my God, the stories. But anyways. Uh, no, I'm not breaking hip because I'm not talking about a particular patient, but no, or, or putting names out there. Plus, I don't work for them anymore either. Um, <laughs> but and I would never do that to anybody. But it was just, you know, all the stories I can go into about some some things. I would also like to write a book on how not to act in the medical office because you will develop um, stories about you amongst these staff. <laughs> Do not walk out on your doctor calling him an asshole, storming off, because let me tell you, you will be well known for the next 10 years in that particular doctor's office. 
God, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. It's been so long since I've actually, I think the last doctor, no, I went to a doctor after I got back from my last trip in India because I was really sick. That was like the last time I actually was in a doctor's office. And I won't, now it's. I just had some, something just hit me just now. I thought about an airplane and I said, why is it that people get sick on airplanes all the time? We just automatically assume it's because that tight, you're, you're in the fuselage of that plane, people back to back and you know, have like any arm leg room uh, from the other person. But who's not to say that airplanes naturally have some, that they have something planted on there to make you a, a, a cold or something. Well, my sickness I got was from the streets of India. I, um, this is kind of gross. So my last trip to India, <clears throat> um, before everything shut down, I got really, really, really sick. Like real, like at the end of my trip, I mean, like to the point where I was delirious. Um, I got myself Ooh. to the hospital and my fever was really high. Um, my stomach was like swelling, but I was, it was coming out both, you know, just constantly. Um, they, they had kept me in the hospital in India for days. Um, now the thing about India, or especially where I go, it's a small town in the South Southern part of India, because I'm a woman, they weren't really clear as to what was wrong with me, but I knew I was really sick. And so when I flew back home, I was a little bit better, but I still wasn't hundred percent. Um, I actually upgraded my ticket to business class at the last minute. Cause it was not as expensive as it would have been because there was no way that I was going to be able to take that flight unless I was going to be able to lie all the way down. That's how sick I was. Um, and when I got home, my mother was insistent that I go to the, the Western doctor too. And so they did some tests on me. I'm not going to specify exactly what that test was, but a couple of weeks later, after I'd gone to the doctor, I was down in Florida and my mom called me and she was like, but you just got to let some, for some reason, the letter, half of my stuff is still have, have my parents address on it. Other half of my stuff has my address on it. I think a lot of people are that way. But anyway, a letter went to my parents' house from the public health department and my mom opened it. I know that's a federal offense, but she's my mom, whatever. She opened the letter and basically the letter was like, you need to call us immediately. And they gave a number. And so my mom called me in Florida and she was like, Bryce, the public health department is trying to contact you. You need to call them. And so I'm in Florida. I'm like, what the, why are they trying to contact me? But I called them and I had a, um, infection that was caused. I know this is gross and it's not E. coli. It's a different one, but it was caused by human feces. That's why I was so sick. Basically in India, it is still acceptable sometimes for men, not women, but for men to go to the bathroom on the street. Now, at this time, my friend Mark and I were rescuing these like five dogs in the, that were staying in gutters. That's where they lived in the gutters. And you have to like climb in and out of it. And these street dogs, the mother at least, would go around leaving her puppies. Anyway, she probably laid down in some dried up feces. And then I pet her and then it just got in my mouth or something. Oh. But I had never been that sick before in my life. Like literally, I thought I was going to die at one point. Like, I really thought like, I, this is it. I'm out. I'm out of this world, you know? Um, and the, the person I talked to at the public health department, because it was caused by human feces that wasn't my own, um, they had to make sure that it wasn't an outbreak in the United States. They had to make sure that I did not pick this up here in America. So I had to like explain my whole trip to India. Then I had to, I had to like account for everybody I'm around in my life to make sure they hadn't brought something back from like, the other country, which it literally, I was like, no, it's me. I'm from India. All right. I got an Indian, like it makes sense. But then the girl on the, the phone was like, you're going to struggle this with this for six months. She goes, you're going to think you're fine. And then all of a sudden you're going to have to go throw up. And she was oh, right. Good to know. Like I would be fine for like a week or two. And then all of a sudden I would have to run to the bathroom and throw up. It took about six months for this bacteria to really work its way out of my system. Wow. It was awful. It was horrible. So that was actually from the streets of India. <laughs> but um, good times. I always get sick when I'm in India. I either get like a kidney infection or, you know. Sounds, <laughs> sounds like a load of fun. It's, but I still love it. I'm still like, man, this is, you know, think about going to India is like when you're in this, when you're in the process of being there and traveling there, it's like, sometimes it's just so stressful. But when you're back, you're like, I'm so glad I went through this. Like, I'm so glad that I did that, you know? So, but yeah. Now, Stephanie, I know you have to jump on David's show soon. Is there anything you want to close out with, with the divine feminine? Don't resist change. No, you're not alone. And if you're going through change, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you 100% with my own, Same. <laughs> which I won't get into. Um, 
just know that God is lining things up for you specifically to bring upon a life of abundance, freedom, um, authenticity, everything. I mean, it's a little, a little piece of heaven on earth for you is awaiting you in this new world. And <clears throat> change is painful sometimes. Change is scary sometimes. It doesn't feel good. It gets you out of your comfort zone. Um, but you're going to grow from it. And in the end, you will be prosperous and um, have a lot of blessings from the divine. So <clears throat> I think a lot of us women, we, we struggle with especially relationship changes, um, whether it's a friendship or it's a, uh, a, a man or whatever. Um, and uh, it, it's scary because we, we have a, a, a natural want of feeling loved and uh, feeling abandonment is one of the scariest things for a woman to go through. It's something I've had to, you know, battle in my life. Same many times. And, you know, so <clears throat> it's for the greater good. And if God is lining you up for change, he's trying to close the door. Don't try to keep that, you know, don't try to not close that door. Just, you know, obviously pray and meditate about it. Definitely. But um, don't be afraid to change. Because, I mean, look at the world we're about to go into. I mean, everything is going to change. So, I mean, we don't have a choice. Yeah, you have no choice. Exactly. You either embrace it and learn from it or you reject it and then it's even more uncomfortable. And that doesn't mean embracing it doesn't mean you you can't have moments of weakness. Like if you gotta cry, go cry. You know, if you gotta I've never done that this week. <laughs> yeah. You just do it. You just got you got you gotta allow yourself that that moment to just yeah. do it. And um I know you're not alone and that every every human being is going through this in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So, and crying is not weakness. It's, um, you're Detox. like, you told, you told me this week, it's, it's, you're, you're getting stuff out of your system. Um, and it's prepping you. Yeah. I'm a big crier. It's honestly, I'm a big crier. Janine, I was, she's a Scorpio moon. So I'm a Scorpio moon. We're, we're very emotional people. I don't know what moon I am, but I like, I tend to hold my, my emotions more inward and I've always tried. I hate crying in front of anybody. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I, it's, I get really embarrassed about it. Um, but that's something I'm, I'm working on myself. Cause uh, you know, growing up, I was like, Oh, you suck it up, buttercup, suck it up, buttercup kind of a thing. Where it's like, Oh, if you're crying, no, you stop the tears, stop the tears instead of just allowing it to come out. So <clears throat> I, I've had to change my mindset with that. There's a lot of patterns we've all had to correct. So yeah. And you guys know Stephanie has her support group too. So if this is something you feel like you need from the support group, then um, I'll put that email address again down in the description box below so you can reach out to Stephanie. Um, for those private support groups, we'd be more than happy to help you out there. All right, guys. Well, I know Stephanie, she's a busy lady. She's high, high demand. She's got to go get on David's channel now. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And next week, we'll go into Left the Left Behind series, unless something crazy happens in between then and now, which who knows at this point. <laughs> um, come so on, God. Come on. <laughs> we, Stephanie and I, will be filming with Janine this weekend. So we're super excited about that. So you guys, guys got some more information coming at you. Um, thank you guys so much for being a part of this journey with us. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.